Huarang Guild was the best guild of Busan. Even though they lost the war, their survivors are still around a thousand. Han Ho says that the number of survivors are bigger than what he expected, but they are all in a bad state and Sung Woo says that it can't be helped. The effect of the breath of the abyss that the evolution society spread is too strong. Except for some players who were treated with potions, the rest are all patients. The vanguard of the Yamato guild alone was over 2,000 and now the size of the follow-up force would be at least several thousands. Sung Woo knows well that this is time to get some reinforcements. Han Ho says it's unfortunate, but if they had the surrounding area under their influence, then they could have asked for help from other guilds and Sung Woo says that they have to increase their distance from Busan as much as they can for now. After they hold their ground for 24 hours and buy some time, they will use the battle event to land a blow on the Japanese side. Repeating this cycle is all they can do for now. Hanho says that none of the three modes, including all our war, duel or capturing, will give them an advantage in this war. But before that, everywhere the Sword Saint goes, he brings destruction. If they don't take down the Sword Saint, then this war won't end. They are unable to stop him even by driving the monsters of the nearby dungeons towards him using the summons. Hanho sneakily asks Suzuki Ren if he knows any weakness of Akata Akira, since he was pretty close with him but Suzuki has no idea about his weakness. Sungwoo says that the Sword Saint does not keep promises. Suzuki Ren says that Sungwoo must know a lot about him. Suzuki Ren says that he don't have a choice. Before the fall or even after that he had no choice. Before the fall in Kyushu, Japan. Ido Ryu is a small swordsmanship dojo in a corner of downtown Kyushu. Yushin, Hokushin and Ido Shoden Ryu are only named same as the other Ido Ryu sects in Japan, but they are just completely unrelated dojos. In a dojo a master is instructing his student saying that a sword is a weapon for murder and it's just a tool. But although merely being a tool, its value changes if it contains a story and their Ito Ryu sword is like that. The sword that the wife gave to the husband hoping that he will return alive from war. The sword that the master handed over to the disciple hoping that he will protect himself in this rough world. The sword that was handed over in hopes that the vassal will become an honorable person. Although all of them are swords, they were used with care as they were objects that contained someone's heart. But a sword is bound to be ruined no matter how well you maintain it. Blocking, cutting, or slashing, after enduring all that trauma it breaks, but we can't still leave them to be destroyed. The kind of swordsmanship that uses the precious object without ruining it. That's the kind of swordsmanship you must learn from now on. The kid master seems to be talking to was young Suzuki Ren. Suzuki Ren needs to fully analyze his own condition as well as the enemy sword state, and on top of that, hone his skills to the limit for the type of swordsmanship that minimizes impact on the weapon. Suzuki Ren has been training harshly since he was little, although it was hard at first, but Suzuki Ren had talent for this, but it was not what he chose for his future. After some years, someone calls out Suzuki Ren. His friend tells him to hurry up since it's getting late for his appointment with Haruka. His friend Kenta keeps on pushing him while he tells him to stop since he saw a game like window in the sky. Haruka gets angry at both of them for being late. After some time they arrive at an anime exhibition. A lot of people showed up for the exhibition. Kenta says that there are so many people here since this anime is now developing into a subculture of Japan. Haruka asks Ken if it's okay for him to be here since he was busy training at the dojo with his father on his anniversary. Suzuki Ren says that learning swordsmanship was not his choice. But he had a lot of talent and he had already surpassed his father's skills as the successor of Ito Ryu. His father tells him to stop hanging out with his friends and neglecting his training and Suzuki Ren asks his uncle if sword skills are really required in today's world. They are now in the 21st century, which is the era of scientific civilization. Even if he sharpens his skills though extreme training to the point of exhaustion, where will he ever use them? Plus day after day the number of officials in their dojo is decreasing and now there are only two left. And he never once properly got to play with his friends Kenta and Haruka. His father says that he feels sorry for him, but Kenta cuts him off saying that you need someone who can inherit the dojo. What he is worried about is not his son, but the dojo that has been passed down through generations. With that being said, Suzuki Ren steps out of the dojo while his father keeps begging him to stop. Suzuki tells his friends that even if he has talent for using a sword, but how is he supposed to make a living out of it? And Haruka says that his father must have something in his mind. Kenta says that it's hundreds of times better for Suzuki Ren to not inherit the dojo. Ever since he was little, he lived a hard life and he was always full of wounds due to training. Suzuki actually likes manga and anime more just like him. Kenta flares up as he says that their future is not decided yet. Rather than inheriting the dojo, 
they should become amazing otakus together. Suzuki is thinking about how he is going to tell his friend that being an otaku is not a profession and they can't make a living out of it. After a few minutes, the fall happened and the class selection screen appeared in front of them. Just as expected, most of the people present around them were shocked at this new turn of events. Suzuki Ren is thinking that even if they are inside a building, it can't get this much dark from just an outage. A bright flash of light happens. After that, the players are represented with a lot of different class cards. All cards have different functions and different numbers of stars on them. Kenta tells his friends to quickly pick up cards since he saw this sort of thing often happening in novels. Suzuki Ren had also a feeling that something big is about to happen and he starts searching for a card with the most number of stars. First of all, Kenta picks up a class card. Kenta picked a fighter card and the system dropped two gauntlets for him. Kenta quickly equips the gloves and he made a guess that they should be hunting monsters and evolving their abilities just like in games while Haruka got a staff after picking a healer job. Suzuki Ren picked up a swordsmanship card but the system did not drop a weapon for him. A few seconds later, the power comes back. The players become a bit afraid and they quickly start heading outside since they are all otakus. They had an idea that things like goblins or some other weaker monsters can start appearing any time now, but most of them stop near the entrance. They can see though the windows that the goblins are massacring the people outside. After the players band together and get rid of the goblins, huge orcs start making their appearance around them. The players become even more afraid and they start running away in fear. Most of the buildings around them start burning due to the massive explosives going on. After a few minutes in a building, Kenta, Suzuki, Ren and Haruka made it alive this far, but they are totally exhausted and Kenta is thinking why this tutorial is too hard. Suzuki Ren is thinking that the reaction of people around them were quick since they have seen a lot of anime and manga, but the number of monsters is overwhelmingly large even though the players reacted fairly well, but monsters are continuously pouring out where more people are gathered. Since the rescue team is not here yet, then it means that this is not the only place where it is happening and they will have to find a way to survive on their own. Haruka is afraid but Kenta tries to relieve her by saying that Suzuki picked a high star class and he is the one who dealt with most of the orcs as well. Suzuki fought with the orcs using the sword of a dead person but it's already in a bad state. He can't wear equipment other than a sword and he cannot even pick skills which form when players level up. There must be some other advantages but there are too many restrictions. In this situation the 5 star job sword saint is like poison to him. Five days after the fall, the battle of survival between the monsters and humans is ongoing on a large scale. Suzuki Ren and his friends need to make a choice if they want to survive. They are all deprived of sleep, and it's been quite a while since they ran out of drinking water and food, they no longer have the means to maintain their physical strength. On the other hand, as the number of people has decreased, the monsters have scattered and there are less of them around. Suzuki Ren can get out of this situation on his own without a weapon but he can't betray his friends. They were the only ones who supported him through his hard times. Kenta was thinking the same thing and he asks Suzuki to get out of there on his own. Suzuki bursts out in anger, but Kenta says that he is not telling him to abandon them and run away. Suzuki can get out of here and find people who can help them as well. Since the monsters can't find people, they have started to fight among themselves and maybe because only three of them survived, even the monsters are not coming for them anymore. If it's just the two of them, then they can withstand the orc attacks until Suzuki returns and Haruka requests him to do the same. Suzuki Ren knows well that he cannot find anyone for help in a burnt city like this and his friends are making up excuses because they think they are holding him back. Even if he is able to find someone, they will not be willing to risk their lives to help some students. Kenta puts his hands on Suzuki and he tells him that he needs to survive no matter what. Kenta is shivering with fear as he knows well that this plan is ridiculous. All of a sudden they hear a loud sound coming from outside. These cries seems to be coming from the monsters who are in a pickle. The orcs are running toward a single target and it looks like the rescue team is here. Suzuki and his friends make it out of the building. The premises of the building looks clear for now. All monsters went in a single direction so Kenta suggests that they should slowly follow them. A few meters away the monsters are in a skirmish and they are having heavy casualties. They are getting shredded to pieces and the player seems to be using a sword. This person turns out to be the father of Suzuki Ren and he single-handedly killed off all the orcs. Suzuki Ren makes his way up to his father. Suzuki asks his father if he came all this way alone and if there was no rescue team and his father tells him that he knew well that his son was not dying to these mere beasts. Both Haruka and Kenta are overjoyed but Suzuki saw something out of place. There is blood coming out of his father's mouth. It turns out he has been stabbed on his back by a knife. 
All this time, his father was dealing with the monsters while having a huge sword wound on his back. Suzuki's father says that he was afraid that he might never be able to see his son again. Suzuki says, Father, you cannot die from such a weak wound. You always said you were strong. His father replies by saying that he is not strong. Even while teaching him the swordsmanship, he was afraid. It was the only thing he could have passed on to his son. In his mind, he had doubts if he should teach his son the sword while the world was moving in other directions and whether he was a hindrance to the growth of his son. But now he is relieved that he taught him to wield a sword. Thanks to that, he will definitely be able to survive in a world like this. These prove to be his final words as signs of life fade away from his body. Suzuki Ren cries out loud for the loss of his father. After that day, it was just like his father said. He was able to survive just fine in a world like this thanks to the sword skills he learnt, plus he was very compatible with the Sword Saint class. There were many restrictions on his class, but his stats grew as he leveled up, and although he could not use skills, the extraordinary physical abilities could make up for it. He also made a little reputation by helping people. Some players were discussing how a player called Sword Saint saved someone from the Orc Lair and a few more people from a Hobgoblin maze. At the same time, some shady people were listening to them. After a few days is the time when he met Okata Akira. Okata Akira asked him if he is the Sword Saint who has been going around saving people. Okata Akira has his friends, and he tells him that he should be careful if his name is known by people. Now that the world is like this, the bad people will be targeting famous people like him. Suzuki Ren asks him about what he is going to do to his friends. Both Kenta and Haruka are alive, but they are unconscious. Okata Akira tells him that he just wanted to become the famous guy's only friend, that's why he kidnapped them. Suzuki Ren drops his sword as he is thinking that he never took into account the malicious intents of people and how far can someone go in an environment like this. After a few days, Suzuki Ren is hunting a boss monster. The boss monster is quite strong and he is the physical type. Suzuki Ren manages to cut off the ankle of the boss to drop him down to the ground. Suzuki runs toward his head to finish it off, but he gets kicked by Okada Akira. Okada Akira says that you should not be hunting boss monsters on your own. They decided to hunt together since Suzuki Ren refused to kill people. Okada Akira lands the final hit to gain the most amount of experience points, and he asks for the understanding of Suzuki Ren since they are close friends. After that, whether it be experience points or hidden quests rewards, everything was taken away by Okada Akira. In the end, he even took the reputation of Suzuki Ren and people thought that Okada Akira was the sword saint. People start praising him for saving so many people from danger, but some people say that they heard rumors that the sword saint was just a kid, but the female player says that it must be a fake rumor. After hearing their whispers, Sword Saint asks Arhata to come forward. Okata Akira tells Arhata that he will soon be saying farewell to his friend. After that, Suzuki Ren snapped back to the present and became silent. Hanho says that maybe he treated this poor guy too badly in the past. Hanho tells Sungwoo that Suzuki seems somewhat similar to them but things seems to be tangled up for him, and Sungwoo says that you are right, and maybe he is a bad ending version of ours. They could have ended up as Suzuki Ren if they had been done in by that vampire lord, but Sungwoo says that they had near death and life experiences as well. The last order given to Suzuki Ren was to help the ninja unit eliminate the necromancer and withdraw. Okata Akira told him that he would free Kenta and Haruka if he accomplishes this task. Sungwoo is about to tell him something important that he found out about Okata Akira from the memories of the first division leader, but Sergeant Kim interferes him. It turns out the beast men are making a move. Hanho tells Sungwoo to look at the sky. Some kites are coming from the skies as well. On their front are the beast men from the Evolution Society while they are being tracked by the ninjas from the back. 